I know if I were using my pressure washer, I would I would be cutting these boards in two. Ah, pressure washing. No, no, high pressure rinsing. High <laughs> pressure rinsing. Yeah. <laughs> now, what I'll say there, there's there's nothing more satisfying than having uh, you know mildew or or whatever you want to call this on on the wood, and just having it instantly cleaned in a matter of seconds. I ju I just love it. I love it. Well, I'll say he he's doing a really nice job with the pressure washing. What what I like is he's taking his time, right? He, he he took his time. He isn't too close to the wood because if you get too close to the wood, then the water literally starts cutting into the surface, and it will leave start stop marks that you just you you really can't get out. And so this guy, you notice he had a very steady, consistent distance from the nozzle of his pressure washer to in this case the the bench part of that of that picnic table and he was able to move through very efficiently he overlapped you overlap this very similarly to how you would overlap a uh you know painting a, a door or anything you got to have a little bit of overlap to make sure that you get everything off and get it completely clean right i i agree with uh most of it my only concern is always i think personally and from you know, like you said, you, if you get too close, you can tear up the wood. I think he is actually too close. Um, I would definitely, I would come back about six inches. Um, I, it looks great. I, I love the fact with, I'm with you. When you can do something like this, you just instantly clean it because you can see the bench versus the tabletop and how much cleaner it is that, you know, that's just satisfying to get that top layer of grime. But you do have to be extremely careful because wood is a very poor surface. And if you get too close, you'll just tear up the wood fibers, which will then allow the algae or the mildew or whatever this is to come back clean quicker and you can see in the background there's already two other tables or three other tables that are already clean um you know so you just th those are things you just got to be careful of i always like to when when i'm recommending cleaning a deck or cleaning any wood surface get a detergent and you know we don't know if he's got a detergent in here i doubt there's one in this injection tip but get some soap on there of some sort and then let that do its work and then i typically recommend using the pressure washer as a water broom as almost just to sweep it off because of the points you made if you get up on it too much you start gouging the wood um these pressure washers you know 5,000 psi you can write your name in concrete with some of them and if you do that in wood you'll cut a board in half or you'll permanently damage the wood like i said it the longevity of injecting water, you know, high pressure water into porous wood, you can really damage it for the long run, cause premature deterioration of the product, um, of the bench. And then also it allows you open up those pores even more. So you're allowing that mold and mildew to set back in quicker and come back that much quicker. So you're then more maintenance on down the road. And that's a nice point. And, and the thing that I'll, I'll say too about pressure washers, just like anything, some are more powerful some are less powerful so you you have to figure out what you need for your particular job and the, the reason why in my opinion I, I i'm okay with his distance it does it looks close I, I i know if i were using my pressure washer i would i would be cutting these boards in two so but the, re the reason why i i didn't necessarily think it was um too close is because i don't see any damage on the door, uh, I'm sorry, on, on, on the boards, which maybe there is, I don't see any in this picture, but I agree the vast majority of pressure washers that you get, I don't think this one's very high powered. I'll just start by saying that. It's not very high powered. It's obviously enough to do this job, but you really have to be careful because like you said, you can, you can write your name very quickly. Right, and I'm assuming, I know most pressure washers, and I'm assuming yours is the same. They've got different tips. They've usually got a black one, a white one, and a yellow one, and a green one. Um, I believe the, and if you just look at the orifice of them, they, they keep changing what the colors mean, which is always a fun game that we all play. But then, so you just look at the orifice and the tighter the orifice, the, um, you know, tighter the spray pattern. So there again, you're, you just have to be very careful with that. And, you know, I understand with the time constraints, a lot of people tell me, oh, you know, I don't have time to do that extra step of getting the soap on there and letting it sit. I get it, uh, you know. This is a product, looks like it's a pretty good production thing. You've got all these tables to do. Who knows what the time frame is? 
um, and they are really, really dirty. But, um, you know, just taking those little extra steps to then you're preserving the product for on down the road. There again, it's a maintenance thing for on down the road. But yeah, it's just watch those tips because unless you want to cut a board in half, which, you know, if you do that, call me before you do it. I want to come out and get it on film. Um, you know, yeah. I know that's a cool look, but or a cool thing to do, but you don't want to do it on a customer's property. You know, they'll be very unhappy if you're slicing their deck or their picnic table in half with a with a, a pressure washer. Exactly. And and when you are pressure washing, particularly something like cedar, because cedar is typically a softer wood, I always start far away. You know, I, I start the pressure, you know, I, I pull the trigger, I start far away and you bring it into the wood because then you can judge. I mean, if you, if, if it were my pressure washer and I was this close, I would be cutting things. But obviously it, it I'm going to just say it appears to be working for this guy, but he obviously was able to dial in, in my opinion, where he thinks it should be. But no doubt, he probably started further away. You bring it in, you're like, okay, okay, there you go. And each board is differently. This board could be fine. He could go on the other side of that table, and that board could be a little bit rotted underneath, and you wouldn't see it on the top, and you could blow right through it. I agree. Yeah. And uh, yeah, and definitely when you do pressure wash things, we don't know what he's going to do next, if he's going to stain it, if they're just going to leave them bare. Uh, but if you are going to add a finish coat to it, especially using the pressure washer, it's a 24 to 48 hour dry time, typically depending on conditions. Um, definitely give it more. And if you're, when you get up on it, especially with a pressure washer, you, you're setting that water so deep into the wood, it's got to take that extra time. Because if you coat right over that, then the coating will lift because that water is still trying to come out. It will try and come up through that coating, whether it be a semi-transparent or a solid, it'll come out and then you'll have bubbling. You'll have um, the coating will release and there again, it will kind of ruin your day. So if you, you've got to give it that time and then also if it rains, that's a whole nother discussion, but definitely give these things the, an extra amount of time to dry, you know, ba again, based on conditions, but when you're pressure washing, yeah, definitely more time to dry, the better. Yes. And, th and that's where having a moisture meter is a good idea. I mean, if, if, if you're like this guy and you're just pressure washing left and right, and, and then you're coming back and you're putting on a top coat of some sort, moisture meters are wonderful check in multiple spots on multiple sides, but otherwise a good rule of thumb, two, three days, like you said, if it's hot and sunny, even better. If not, you know, just adjust accordingly. Right. Yeah. And definitely um, the other way to prevent this is just to, I don't know, not leave it under the tree. <laughs> That's <laughs> Let it get some sun. You could do that, but then this poor guy would be out of work, Chris. There is, there is that as well. And then um, the only thing I will add to this is because there's a lot of just goop coming off of this, these tables. If you're whatever the surface is, this looks like a brick, uh, you know, uh, ground that he's working on. Definitely rinse off all of your surface as well, especially if you're using a cleaner as well. You want to triple rinse everything to dilute and so it's not damaging anything else. And then this in this case, if it's just the grime, you want to get that off because otherwise it's going to stain those bricks down below. So give it a good rinse, then you have a nice clean area afterwards. Yes, and, and it just looks better to the customer. So to, to me, I would pressure wash like this guy's doing, and then you you pretty much water sweep the, the patio here just to get all that gunk and all that stuff off. And people like it because it's, it's like a little bonus. It only takes a couple minutes to just water sweep it, but it only takes a couple minutes, but people like it and it just clean and it's much appreciated. As always, thank you for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe.